leadership and you and you just get promoted or maybe you say i'm done with this organization i'm going to go somewhere else but you can then show that you've got a track record of developing people which is very attractive to employers and makes mm -hmm. you very attractive and marketable in in the leadership world yeah. so you see there's a lot to this so but, yeah, but of course it just depends on where people are coming from and what they're looking for i'm a bit stuck in the beginning in stage one because <laughs> with all the explanations because i'm just imagining someone at work that i would talk to and, and i can maybe see that and feel that they are anxious right now and therefore they're angry just thinking about telling them you know i see that you're anxious right now ah but you don't, don't see this is the trick you never use an i statement what, what you are what would you say you would say hey you're really you're really anxious and concerned never use an i statement oh you really have anxious. to learn yeah oh that's good and and let's say that they are, they they learn that vulnerability is, is not good and therefore they would say no i'm not like i i'm worried like i'm, I'm angry about something like no i'm not anxious how did you think that i'm anxious i'm not weak oh no that's perfect because they just told you what they're feeling i'm not anxious i'm angry oh man you are really pissed off you're really angry yeah and that's it, it. The, the, the push that's not pushback that's that's the, that's that person struggling to figure out what they really do feel, and when they say, yeah. "No, I'm not anxious. I'm angry." Oh, you're angry. Well, that's great. Sometimes people will say they'll give you a little bit of pushback. Well, who the heck do you think you are? My psychotherapist? Something yeah. like that. That doesn't yeah. happen very. It happens very rarely. Really? But all it means is you you were too good. You just you were you were too you you punched through their wall like a superhero, and it scared it scared them because you saw them for who they really were. And they don't they don't want to be feel that vulnerable because they don't have enough trust with you. So that just means you have to back off and yeah. be a little more subtle. I see. OK, that really makes sense to me. So I'm going back to the de-escalation part, because I, I feel that in general, at, le at least as I see it, like after these two years, much more people are anxious and worried and angry. I right. see more of them right now or maybe it's only in israel and we are anxious as the basic level and now we're even more than that right but but you wrote a book about de-escalation right de-escalation uh, emotional person and um, how to how to what's what's the word i'm not i'm not finding it how to calm an angry person how to calm yeah how to calm an angry person in 90 seconds right right so tell me about that. How do I calm a very angry person in Israel? We see them on the roads. They're cutting you. They're like in the lines in the supermarket. You see them all around. Oh, everywhere. And it's we've really got it bad here in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's just start off with a little brain science to understand why. And then, and then I can explain how to do it. So when, when, when somebody becomes emotional, there are certain part neural circuits in their brains that start to activate and they activate and other circuits deactivate. And it turns out that the, the executive function of our brain in the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex shuts down as the emotional circuits light up. And you've noticed this, you say they're acting, he or he's acting like a six year old. Well, in that moment yeah. he is acting like he is six years old. Yes. So the problem is, as I see it, is that the, when the when the prefrontal cortex shuts down, it loses connection with what is known, what could be called an emotional database, the ability to understand emotion, one's own emotions and somebody else's emotions. And everybody has this ability. It's very limited and and um, not well developed with most people. So it's very easy to kick the uh, prefrontal cortex offline. Goldman called that the um, the amygdala, the amyg amygdalic hijack. Uh, and that's what happens. You get overwhelmed and now you can't think anymore. So what brain scanning studies show, especially out of Matthew Lieberman's lab at UCLA, is that when you reflect back somebody else's emotional experience, it helps them. You're literally lending them your prefrontal cortex and it helps them reconnect their prefrontal cortex to their emotional database. And as that happens, the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex comes back online. And at the same time, the emotions, the emotional circuits 
are inhibited. They de they they literally de-escalate. They calm down, and it ha takes about ninety seconds. So the way so now we've got the science that explains yeah. why this works. So how do you do it? Three steps. Step number one: ignore the words. You don't need to listen to the words. Angry words mean nothing to you. It's just white noise. Step number two: read the emotional data fields. It turns out that we are. As human beings, we have an innate ability to read other people's emotions accurately, efficiently, and quickly, and effortlessly. So all you need to do is sit in silence.